You must know these before you even decide to watch the Oppenheimer movie. Christopher Nolan's Oppenheim is out, and like other blockbuster movies, its title comes with a question mark for some moviegoers. Who was Robert Oppenheimer, the character that Cillian Murphy played in the movie? And what did he do? This video will tell you everything you need to know before watching the movie. But before I go deep into it, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for videos just like this. All right, now that that is over, let's not waste any more time and get into it. Who was Robert Oppenheimer? Robert Oppenheimer, born in 1904, was an exceptional American physicist who played a pivotal role in creating the atomic bomb during World War II. His passion for science and incredible intellect led him to lead the Manhattan Project, a top-secret mission aiming to build the bomb before Germany could. Though successful, witnessing the bomb's devastating impact on Hiroshima and Nagasaki weighed heavily on Oppenheimer, leading him to express deep regrets. Known as the father of the atomic bomb, Oppenheimer's charisma and brilliance left a lasting mark on the scientific community. After the war, he advocated for international control of nuclear weapons, working towards peace and nuclear disarmament. However, due to his political views during the Cold War, he faced controversy, and his security clearance was revoked. After battling throat cancer for several years, Robert Oppenheimer finally died on February 18, 1967, at the age of 62. Perhaps my favorite quote from him is, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Is the Oppenheimer movie based on a true story? Yes, and the movie adheres closely to the facts of Robert Oppenheimer's well-documented life. Oppenheimer is regarded as the father of the atomic bomb. He was one of America's leading physicists and was on the cutting edge of quantum physics in the 1920s and 1930s. What was the Manhattan Project? Oppenheimer's greatest achievement, and the meat of the movie, came when he was asked to run America's wartime A-bomb project in New Mexico, the top-secret Manhattan Project. It was a race against time against Nazi scientists that he won for his country. He was the director of the Los Alamos secret city that produced the bomb in two and a half years. What's the story of Oppenheimer? There's a great arc to it, from the triumph of the war years to the tragedy of what America did to him in the era of the McCarthy witch hunts. In 1945, Oppenheimer was a national hero who had helped his country win the war, with his face adorning the covers of Time and Life magazines. Just nine years later, he was hauled before a kangaroo court, humiliated and stripped of his security clearance. He became a public non-entity. What was Robert Oppenheimer really like? He was deeply charismatic and attractive to women. He wasn't just a nerdy personality. He loved French literature, British poets, and the novels of Ernest Hemingway. And he acquired a fascination for Hindu mysticism. Cillian Murphy plays Oppenheimer as having a very intense personality, which is exactly right. He was very intense and thoughtful, a man full of contradictions who was fragile and sensitive, but also strong. Murphy really captures the complexity of the man. How did Oppenheimer feel about the bomb? Conflicted, in a word. He had very mixed emotions. He'd worked very hard to produce this bomb. His motivation was that he believed his counterparts in Germany were capable of bringing Hitler the bomb, and he understood what a terrible outcome that would be. But he was also aware that there would be mostly civilian victims of this weapon if it were ever used because it would be used in a city. Did the poisoned apple incident in the movie actually happen? The movie opens with Oppenheimer as a Cambridge undergraduate injecting his tutor's apple with cyanide in a fit of pique before hastily binning the fruit and rescuing the man from certain death. Robert Oppenheimer's bibliographer Bird can't vouch for the incident's historical accuracy. Maybe it was a metaphor, he says. Although Oppenheimer told his friends that story, Bird says that it captures an emotional truth about the young Robert. He was a fragile young man, and he had a near-nervous breakdown. He was suspended from Cambridge and put on probation, although we don't know exactly what happened, because his Cambridge records were destroyed. What happened to Oppenheimer after the war? America's anti-communist fervor in the late 1940s brought him really low. His own left-wing ties, he was dating Gene Tatlock, a communist organizer played by Florence Pugh in the movie, and his outspoken worries about the spread of nuclear weapons made him a target for the McCarthyite witch hunts. He was eventually forced to attend a jumped-up security hearing. 
He spent the rest of his life after 1945 trying to grapple with the implications of what he had produced as a scientist. He was very intolerant of authority and arrogance, and as a result he made some powerful political enemies. Did the president really call him a crybaby? Yes. As Nolan's film shows in a gripping Oval Office scene, Oppenheimer blew his meeting with President Truman by seizing the moral high ground in their discussion of the A-bomb. It was a disaster of a meeting. Truman told an aide, I don't want to see that crybaby scientist ever again. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, kindly give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this.